slightly from last week because uh, it's a lovely day. Uh, a particular also welcome to uh, people watching um, at home online uh, whether now or uh, at some other point so we're gathered those of us here but also those remotely uh, apart from us as well. I hope there'll be a sense of which we we're drawn together. Uh, just a few sort of notice bits one which some of you will have picked up is a change in, uh, or some clarification anyway, in our guidance on singing. For people that came along last week, we sang, um, and then we got some clarification saying, actually we shouldn't do, the advice is changing on a day-to-day -day basis. So we're not singing this week. We're gonna try and do something a little bit different with music. Obviously, John, John can sing to us, and we've got him mic'd up. So, and we're gonna use um, some music in a few different ways. But um, this week we won't sing. Who knows where we'll be at by uh, next week. Uh, for, let's could see a good number of children here. I think you've all got activity packs. If you haven't, there's one left on the table. In your activity packs, uh, there's various things for you to uh, do and to think about. Uh, we're going to be thinking about a passage uh, or a parable in the Bible about planting seeds. So you've got a bit of seed planting to do. Um, we've also got, within your service sheets, there's Agnes's phone number, which is mysteriously next to prayers. We can continue doing what we did last week, um, where you can text in, if anyone's got a mobile phone with them, particularly children, but not confined to children, if there's something, a prayer you want to write, or something you want to say thank you for, um, you can text it to that number and Agnes will incorporate it into the prayers beautifully when we get to that point in our service. <laughs> so, but don't, don't need to wait until then. If you've got prayers you want to think about children or adults, you can start writing those and text them to the number in the service sheet. Also in your packs, children, there's a blank piece of paper or a piece of scrap paper anyway, and you've got some pens. Now, especially for you bigger ones, I've got a little challenge for you. Now, I want you to write the letters of the alphabet, A to Z, and then for every letter in the alphabet, I want you to write down something which reminds you or helps you to think about God. It might be what God's like. So for A, you could have, uh, somebody give me an idea. What could you do? Go on, Abby. Amazing. So A is easy. Then you think of all the way through, and if anyone gets X and Z and stuff, we'll see where you've got to by the end of the service. Adults, if you switch off, you can have a little play with that as well, if I get really boring. Uh, I think that's everything that's in your pack, so I'll explain some of the other things later. We've got some bands of marriage to read, importantly. 
that I published the bands of marriage between Michael James Dean and Lisa Everhand, both of this parish. This is for the second time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. So we continue to pray for Michael and for Lisa as they prepare for their wedding day. Hopefully you've all got service sheets if you haven't there's some on the table. But we'll begin with um, our words of welcome. What is God like? God is caring and tender. What is God like? God is slow to anger. What is God like? God is rich in kindness. Creator God, we prepare a place for you. Come to us in the difference of every life gathered. Come to us in our homes. Come to us through music. Come to us in word. Come to us in stillness. Come to us in flesh and blood. Reach out across time. Be present in all time. Come Jesus, be our guest. Stay with us, with friend, with stranger, with young and old, with the lost and found. Be amongst us today, our guest, our host, the one who says, all are welcome. Just for a hand over to John. I said at the nine o'clock uh, service um, in the church earlier on, I encouraged people that in, the, in these different services and in these different times to maybe pay attention to different parts of the service so if you're a singer and you love singing and you're unable to do that that's going to feel like a struggle for me not to be able to celebrate around the communion table is a real hurt for me and we've all got those things that we naturally engage with but perhaps at the moment maybe see what god might say to you through parts of the service that maybe feel less engaging at times for you so i just leave that thought in your head very very good so I can understand that but what they did was they basically stopped all music in Soul Survivor for a time and they effectively sacked my friend and his band and uh, the idea was that they got back to the heart of what worship is and it's all about Jesus that's what the chorus of this song says Thank you. 
God in a time of confession. Holy God, maker of us all, have mercy on us. Jesus Christ, servant of the poor, have mercy on us. Holy Spirit, breath of life, have mercy on us. So let us in silence confess our faults and admit our frailty. Before God, with the people of God, we confess to our brokenness, to the ways we wound our lives, the lives of others, and the life of the world. So may God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Almighty God, send down upon your church the riches of your Spirit and kindle in all who minister the gospel in any way 
your countless gifts of grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Have our first reading, which Paul's going to read to us from Psalm 119. lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and will fulfill it to keep your righteous judgments. I am troubled above measure. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept the free will offering of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your judgments. My soul is ever in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your testimonies have I claimed as my heritage forever, for they are the very joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes, always, even to the end. reading is from Matthew chapter 13. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while, and when trouble or persecution arises on the account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but, ca but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So children, you've got some seeds to uh, be getting on with some planting. I'm going to tell you a bit about my uh, planting experience as we begin. Uh, I've said it before, but I'm uh, no gardener. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm aware there are some gardeners here. And I'm, I'm, I'm fearful of the garden that we'll inherit when we move in 10 days' time. I did, however, once reseed uh, the lawn of my mum's garden. I remember walking backwards and forwards with handfuls of seed, liberally scattering them far and wide, which of course the birds loved, and the flower beds became a good habitat for the lawn, which my mum was less than impressed with. The parable of the sower is what our reading is usually called, uh, but I've been thinking about renaming it in the light of what I'm about to say. I've thought about calling it the parable of the wasteful sower or the parable of the bad gardener. But everyone knows that, even I do, that if you're going to scatter seed, you need to at least think about where you're going to sow it. And more preferably, to do some work preparing the soil, removing some of the rocks and the weeds before you begin. Now, parables are so familiar to uh, many of us that if we're not careful, they just become nice little stories or fables 
nice moral stories, but that isn't really their point or their purpose. We have to ask for ourselves, who is Jesus or where is Jesus within them? For Jesus tells them not simply to make some generic point about niceness, but to say something about himself, or perhaps to say many things about himself. This version that we read today from Matthew is really unusual as a parable, and it's different from the version of this story in Mark, because this gives an explanation of the parable which you don't get anywhere else. The parable for Sower, for me, this week, is about abundance. It begins and ends there. Liberal scattering of seed everywhere. Not just in the obvious places, but in the wild places, in the rocks and the thorns. And I think we need to hear a story or an account, a parable about abundance, where in so much of our news we're faced with thinking about scarcity. Maybe we need to hear something about abundance in these times. There's a, a lovely story, an animated film called The Man Who Planted Trees. Has anyone read it? The Man Who Planted Trees. I think it was, yeah, so it works out the fact that at least one person's read it. Um, I think it was written in the 60s, and there's a short film about it, and it's a really short book. And it's this heartwarming and hopeful uh, story of Elziard Bouffier. In 1913, the narrator is walking through the Provence region of France and comes into a desolate and empty area. The small village he walks through is just ruins. The fields are brown and dusty and there are few trees. The wells and the streams have all gone dry. But just beyond this area in the distance, he comes across a shepherd living alone with his small flock of sheep and his dog at the edge of a small forest. And it turns out that Buffier had planted all the trees in that area. Each day he gets up and sorts a hundred acorns to plant as he walks. And he had single-handedly planted 100,000 trees over the course of three years. The narrator returns after World War I to see what time had done to Bouffier's trees and to discover if he was still alive. Alive and well, Bouffier's forest had grown even larger. He'd given up keeping sheep because they threatened the tree seedlings and turned his hand to beekeeping, but he was still planting trees. The, the forest that Bouffier created now measured 11 kilometres in length and three kilometres at its widest. Water and animals had returned to the dry land and now nature herself was helping to plant trees too. Eventually, the state forces were alerted to the existence of this natural forest and eager to protect it. A ranger knocked on Bouffier's door in 1933 and told him he was not allowed to have fires as a precaution to keep the natural forest safe. The forest grew so large that Bouffier moved house 12 kilometres away to the edge of his forest so he didn't have to walk so far each day in order to plant more trees. The deserted village was revived and rebuilt. In a very moving part of the story, which you do worse than to have a moment of reading that book or looking up the video on YouTube. But in a really moving part, Buffier reveals to the narrator that he'd spent three years planting in the wilderness. He'd planted a hundred thousand acorns. Of these, twenty thousand had sprouted, and of these, he still expected to lose half. And yet he continued to plant in this barren land. We live in a world of action plans and strategies and risk assessments. Just ask the PCC, uh, <laughs> the risk assessments involved in reopening the church building. Businesses and churches have goals and vision statements. And of course these things are and can be helpful. But I'm struck by the sower in Matthew, 
who didn't seem to have much of a plan. He simply had a load of seeds and simply started throwing them around here, there and everywhere and saw what happened. Maybe the seed is the love of Christ, the hope and compassion of Christ, the grace that comes to us, whatever season or soil type we think we find ourselves in. I wonder if you can think of times when that love has fallen on rocks in your life, or thorny times, times where this seed of love perhaps has been picked up and taken away because of what someone else has done to you or said to you. Maybe you can point to seasons when faith has seemed easy and it flourished for a while, but the roots didn't go deep and life took its toll. Or times of flourishing and closeness where you felt you were growing quickly and easily and naturally. soil type might be, Jesus continues to sow despite of the fact that this reckless kind of love led to a first century cross. And despite the various soil that did not look promising, some of the seed grew, some of it took root, and the wind of the spirit got hold of it, scattered it far and wide down centuries and across continents and even to a churchyard in Paul or in your homes where you watch this. That seed which looked so fragile took root despite of all the odds. Have you heard of gorilla gardeners? Now I don't mean the animal, gorillas. <laughs> Guerrilla gardeners, these people are people who take it upon themselves to plant in abandoned or neglected pieces of land. Unseen and unspoken, they plant wild flowers, bringing life and joy into barren places. Before you leave on the table there and in children's packs, there's a little thing which Agnes has put together for us, and there's some wild flower seeds here for you to take away and become your own guerrilla gardeners. As a reminder of the hope of the seed which takes root and perhaps there's a place which looks a bit abandoned that you might just be able to sprinkle a few wild seeds and see what happens. Maybe that feels a bit scary and you can do it in your own garden. a little reminder of this parable. We are to be imitators of Christ. So may you, may we, be a community who sow seeds of love, compassion, hope, joy and grace in all who we meet. Even when it seems like the most inhospitable of soil, we entrust God with our small efforts, asking him to take them and use them, and to bring about the dream of God. Amen. Thank you, Lewis. It's an amazing uh, concept, this, this reckless, um, reckless gardener just throwing seed wherever. Um, we're going to, uh, or I'm going to sing a song now that uh, I don't think many people know here. Um, if you do, let me know. It's called Your Grace is Enough by Reuben Morgan. Um, and he just kind of picks up on this uh, amazing sort of reckless grace almost. Um, the chorus of it says, Freely you gave it all for us. Surrendered your life upon that cross. Great is the love poured out for all. This is our God. Um, the sower in the story was quite um, abundant with the seed and Jesus is as abundant with his sacrifice on the cross and that's what we are going to uh, think about now as we come to God in prayer.
God of endurance and reliability. Be with your word, obsessed by many cares and short-term gains. Renew the face of the earth. May the groans of the created world not be ignored in the need of economic recovery. By your Holy Spirit, inspire all people to sustainable living. Spirit, open our hearts to share the fruits, to share the fruits of the fields in the seasons. The lovely text I got. Thank you for our loving God, family, friends, and our earth, full of richness and beauty. God of hope and consolation, deal tenderly with all from whom life, for whom life is full of struggle. Give them strength in their suffering. We'll take a minute to focus on our hearts. Spirit, bring us to rejoice in your presence. God of life and peace, you set your creation in motion. Bring to fulfillment the purpose you set for each one of us. By your Holy Spirit, bring us to dwell with you forever. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Asking today. <laughs> okay, the last song I'm going to sing this morning is uh, one that you all know very well, King of Kings, Majesty. Eternal, faithful, and 
for our sending out and final blessing. Uh, have, has any, have any of the children managed to get any of the letters? Abby, you've got some. You've got all of them. Okay, right, I'm going to pick four random letters. So then we're going to see uh, how we done, if there's any other children. Did anyone get anything for C? Yeah? Okay, I'm going to go Esme. What did you get for C? Ooh, shout loud. Careful. Careful. Thank you. Right, let's pick another letter. Um, S. Down the front here. Saving. Saving. Good one. Good one. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm going to just pick one more. Uh, X. Abby. <laughs> oh, oh, no. no. What did you get, Abby? X ray. <laughs> okay, talk to the theology of that afterwards. We'll have a conversation. Because <laughs> God can see everything. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> it's the brains of the operation. <laughs> well, thank you for participating in my little activity there. Let's stand for our uh, final prayers. God be the road on which you travel, he the mountains on which you are tested and challenged, he the well at which you find healing and peace. Christ be the light by which you travel, he the vision which informs and enlarges you, he the star shining in your darkest nights, the spirit inspire you as you travel, she the restlessness driving you onwards, she the stillness leading you to the heart of the truth, the three, go with you as you travel, and may your journey begin, continue, and end in them. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ.